I'm delighted to welcome back Gary Tabach. He is former Chief of Staff, NATO Military Liaison Mission in Moscow. Gary, welcome back. Good to see you. Thank you, Hashim. Good to see you, and Carolina, as always. Thank you. So, Gary, um, this is a wake-up call, isn't it, for the West? Uh, I mean, Russia's, you know, uh, producing uh, munitions three times faster than, than Western countries are, despite being heavily sanctioned. I mean, what's this telling us? Well, it's telling us that they want to do it, and uh, we are not willing to do the same thing. Although, uh, you know, I just, right before the program, happened that I I remember when I was stationed in Poland and we were uh, rearming Poland to the, to the NATO standards, I was visiting all those facilities where we have uh, stockpiles of our ammunition uh, as uh, aircraft and, uh, and ships and uh, helicopters and tanks. And, can- and there were a lot of munitions, so I thought maybe you ran out of it. But no, I Googled it. We have almost over a little bit over a billion uh, rounds of different types of munitions, including uh, 155 caliber, 105 caliber, 122. So, of course, a- including uh, attackums, which we will take off uh, from our stockpile uh, from armaments uh, next year. So, I'm not I'm not sure why why Czech Republic had to go run around and then locate a million rounds, but then they couldn't collect the money. I just don't understand what the purpose of a NATO uh, is really. If we claim not to have munitions or we claim that we cannot build factories f- uh, for Ukraine, send them a line that they could do it for themselves. And I know in Ukraine, right before the war, we were trying to set up a line for 155 um, uh, rounds, but uh, it was derailed. And I think it was derailed by the Russians in a sense, or their agents inside of Ukraine, knowing that their war is coming and they didn't want Ukrainians to produce it. So there is a lot of subversion uh, going on in Ukraine, uh, uh, preventing them from producing their own munitions. And we're not supplying. We're promising. We're promising, but not. that's about it. But what it's called, we're, we're committing, but not delivering. So there are clearly two important issues at hand. One, that there is the munitions is somewhere in a warehouse is not delivered. And second, that the munitions is not produced fast enough. Uh, You know, I know you're not a mind reader, but what do you think is behind NATO's reluctance to deliver those munitions? Now, we can read in reports that uh, on the Ukrainian front, the soldiers are told to save uh, save the munition, and that's, that's why the situation around Kharkiv is so basically terrible. So why that reluctance? Well, th- there, there are several things. One, uh, as you say, the, the lack uh, uh, of rounds, of uh, artillery rounds that the Ukrainians can fire back. There is uh, a lack of long-range attack arms uh, and similar type of weaponry. Uh, the, the thing is that apparently, from what I understand, we have like 4 million uh, rounds of cluster bombs, which this year we already have utilized or destroyed uh, over a million instead of giving them, handing them over to Ukraine. The same thing with F-16s, same thing with Humvees. So we as volunteers like myself, we will buy those old pickup trucks in Poland and elsewhere and ship them to Ukraine, which is not... Uh, sufficient and uh, which is not really good enough. That's one thing. The other one that's about Kharkiv is that uh, we do not allow Ukrainians to fire on a Russian territory. So Russians pull up their artillery and they pull up their uh, their troops all the way up to the Ukrainian border without any fear of uh, collecting themselves there and uh, f- uh, f- uh, forming an attack planning it without and firing on Kharkov, uh, uh, pulling up, you know, flying up very close to the to the border and releasing those uh, guided bombs, uh, cobs, which just hit a shopping center on the on the weekend last Saturday, killing many people, including children. 
but we're not allowing Ukrainians to shoot back at them with our weaponry. So the rumor was that after visit of uh, Secretary of State Blinken, who played and sang on the guitar in the nightclub there very nicely, should have probably taken Clinton with a saxophone and things like that. But <laughs> they said that he was trying to convince President Biden to allow us to do, to allow Ukrainians to do that. And everybody were hyped. And apparently Ukrainians did fire on one of the missiles that was released on them with our uh, Patriot missile and shoot it down. And it was over Russian territory. And that, and now it created a big scandal. And we're, at, uh, you know, threatening that we're going to stop supplying Ukrainians with uh, with attack uh, uh, and with Patriots. And uh, so, and of course, Europeans are follow our lead. So NATO does what Americans do. It is a very, uh, uh, it is unfortunate situation. That was the mistake we made in Vietnam when Vietnamese realized that we weren't going to chase them or fire them in, in another country. So they were firing at us from Cambodia. So, but we wouldn't fire back yeah. at them, which is, which, is, which is really a very poor uh, way of leading and fighting a war. There's no way you can win being on a defensive all the time. There it's is no very sports, frustrating. Or, football, or boxing that you always yeah. in defense. You have yeah. to attack. Yeah, it's very frustrating, Gary. There's no doubt. Uh, you know, the world is asking Ukraine to fight with one hand tied behind its back. Unfortunately, exactly. we're going to have to leave it there, Gary, but we look forward to seeing you Thank again you. shortly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Hashim. Always a pleasure. Thank you.